Ah, water parks. The short lines, the exhilarating slides, the water free of urine, and the freedom to do whatever you want. JK, yeah, most of them suck, but luckily I recently came across one that doesn't. Actually, out of all the spots I've been to in search of fun over the years, this one lives at the top of my list. It's called the Redneck Water Park, an oasis filled with just about every contraption you can think of, and for years this place has been just an hour away from where I live. It makes sense why I never knew about this place though, it practically has no digital footprint. You can't find it on Google, there's no Instagram, and no one's ever filmed a video here. So when I was invited by a family member to join them at quote, a pond that has a zip line, you can imagine the look on my face when I arrived to see slides towering above the nearby trees. The closer we got, the more I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I had to find out who'd built this place. I was told he had a beard, so when I saw the only bearded guy flying down the slides, I put two and two together. His name is Cody, and despite the age gap, a shared interest in what he calls dumb sh** led us to becoming friends and eventually him agreeing to let me show the world the Redneck Water Park. I suppose the best place to start is with the name. When you hear the word redneck, it likely registers as a term describing country people, usually in a negative light. But in my experience, the people who use this word to describe themselves don't see it as negative at all. I'm redneck all the way. <laughs> my self-proclaimed redneck grandpa is a great example. Hello, girl. <laughs> He's a little rough around the edges, but growing up around his fun and wild energy was truly one of the highlights of my childhood. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he always have me laughing, he also taught me practical life skills that have proved useful for many projects. One of these projects was actually an attempt at sort of our own redneck water park. Our improvised designs may not have passed a safety inspection, but they sure made for more fun than I've found at any commercial place. Well, there might be one exception. Come to the flip pad, link in the description. Anyways, my pursuit of unregulated fun really seemed to lack creativity as Cody took me on a tour of each apparatus he'd built. And that was an old rodeo judging booth. Two diving boards found out in the middle of a pasture. It was uh, actually for uh, birthing pigs. Pretty much everything is a uh, <laughs> redneck supply. And our first stop was the beginner slide. The material is uh, what they use for like semi tarps. Oh, okay. They cover like semis and stuff like that. And so, so you could go down on your stomach, but what we normally do is we ride boogie boards. And the reason is rock quarries equal rocks and they actually make you travel faster. So we'll get, get you aboard and let you use this for the first time, so. Okay. I still see dry spots and I want my skin. And after a quick boarding lesson, it was time to go. <laughs> All right, stay right there. Let me see if I can beat it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, you got real close to beating it. Man just rolled on ground. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, I should go again. Maybe we move on. <laughs> In the first five minutes, I'd rip my favorite swim trunks and Cody cut his foot, but that was a small price to pay for getting to use something as cool as this next contraption. So out of everything that I built, this is probably the thing I was most excited to try to figure out how to build it. So no one knows what it is. And so it, it really just sits here until I find someone that's knacker about it, and I'll invite them down here. But this is uh, what they call Russian swing. And so they use it in the circus a lot. Our goal is eventually put foot straps on it. So it's a swing that you you can essentially go all the way around on. And so it, the, the material on it was uh, actually for uh, birthing pigs. Pretty much everything is a uh, <laughs> redneck supply <laughs> That shop. is so, so cool. You create the momentum, I will do the flying. All right, I can do that. Two. Holy three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I feel like this is a good time to say how old you are. <laughs> Not yet 50. Not yet 50. <laughs> Does that mean you're close? I'm getting close. After probably 10 years of wanting to try a Russian swing, the time had finally come. And here I was, scared out of my mind. It doesn't look that bad on camera, but when you're actually on this thing, it's terrifying. Two. Three. All I gotta say is respect to the first people who got on this death trap. Next, we headed over to the high dive, which is actually a conveyor belt that was used when this place was an active rock quarry. Cody kept several of these when he purchased the land, and he's actually used them for some of his slides. I guess this could be considered redneck, but I just think it's super cool. Three, two, one, see ya. Attached to the diving platform are three rope swings. The first one's mostly for kids, but we still had some fun on it. Uh, suck them knees up. Suck them knees up, that's right. 
<laughs> Laugh is good. The second one is a bit more intense, leaving you level with the high dive after holding on for dear life over the rocks below. And the third? This one's no joke. Standing 40 feet above the water, this one actually makes you fly. Uh, holy sh- uh. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're over the water, you've still got to be careful because landing wrong from this height can seriously be dangerous. I guess the stinker landed wrong and I was trying to figure out if he's alive or not, but the blob was kind of in the way. I am bad at filming now, I'm sorry guys. Speaking of dangerous, wait till you see this next one. I was an old rodeo judging booth off an old rodeo grounds. Put the blob on it and everyone kept getting hurt on the blob so we added just a diving board and so since this crazy guy came out, we put the blob back out, so we'll go check out the blob. <laughs> this and the Russian swing are the two things I've dreamed of since I was a kid. Never got to try both of them. Just sitting here, existing, an hour away from me. Oh. 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 This is gonna be insane. I'm gonna launch him so high. Oh, <laughs> this whole thing <laughs> Launch. Yeah, I think I missed the shot. He went above the camera. Oh, it's too high. Yeah, so we never quite succeeded with the blob. Even with two people launching me, this is the highest I got. <laughs> a little bit of a bummer, but I'm glad I got to do it, and thankfully, there's still a lot more to try. Like the three zip lines that take you from one end of the pond to the other. <laughs> The zip swing that is very hard to hold on to. A 28 foot high rock climbing wall and this obstacle course that hangs under a bridge. These slides that he calls the Superman slides. And the 600 foot long two lane racing slide. Go. No, 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 no fair. He's heavier than me! Ah! No! Oh! I think your slide is less water. No! Ah! <laughs> hey, no fair, you're thicker. But I'm on my way. Those are all pretty cool, but they're all still side attractions. Let's check out the three main slides. So this is uh, the skipping slide. It is the absolute most used slide we have here. Oh. Yep, I can attest. The skipping slide really never gets old. So this is the red slide. This is the first slide people use that has a ramp on the end. A little scary, but not bad. The red one's actually quite the rush, and I definitely landed on top of Cody here. This is the TP slide. About 95% of my guests do not utilize it. And the 5% that do like to break my boards. Ah, <laughs> oh, I get it. Yeah, it's like a... <laughs> and the teepee slide was another one of the things that genuinely scared me. I was fine on the giant rope swing since I've had practice on my own, but the one and only other time I've tried to slide, this happened. But of course, when the owner starts counting you down, there's no backing out. That was actually so fun. Now I just want to do it again. Eventually, I got confident enough to jump from the 2x4s like Cody did, and I hit a pretty decent trick off of it. But the best tricks came a few weeks later when 20 of my professional flipping friends flew here for my annual event, the Midwest Meetup. Here's a quick recap of our visit to the Redneck Water Park.
Yo! Wait, I almost forgot to show you guys the human slingshot. So, uh, we're doing the human slingshot. Two telephone poles, bungee cords, and a four-wheeler. Here we go. He was right, this hurts my sack. Ah! This one doesn't have to do with water. Well, it might if the redneck engineering failed, but luckily for my friends and I, it worked perfectly. And since I was still alive, I was able to ask Cody a few more questions about his park. <laughs> you look beautiful. There it is. <laughs> the first thing I thought when I drove up here, not knowing what I was getting myself into was, who other than me would be crazy enough to waste all their time and money to build a place like this? Like, who is this guy? Finally met you and you're so unsuspecting. I was like, what, what, why did you build this place? You know, I think as you get older, you realize it's, you can't travel as easy as you used to with family and commitments. And so I'm like, well, the best way to experience it is to let other people experience with you and that's to build it. The same rationale for my building, you know? Yeah. Everyone says Kansas is boring. Oh, why do you live in Kansas? Get asked every time I travel. I'm like, well, if, if there's no fun, you just make the fun. For me, a lot of the ideas behind this place were a byproduct of having been injured and lost the ability to do about anything. I actually had three back surgeries prior to falling and breaking four vertebrae. And so essentially I was minorly paralyzed on my right leg and simple oh, wow. walking was, um, was even challenging for a while. You know, as I'm getting older, it's just one of those, you know, just why I still can. And I, you know, I call it therapy, and my wife calls it my, my midlife crisis. And so, <laughs> and so I really get a kick out of seeing people's amazement when they just, yep. you tell them, hey, I got a little water park, and they think, you know, like a slip and slide they bought from Walmart. And so to, to bring them out, it's kind of been funny. Um, generally throw a couple, three or four parties a year, and it's usually just families and friends. And to see grown men smile and have fun, and it's, it's lightened my world. It's, I think it's invited people into experiencing the land and experiencing risk. And so we only really have two rules here. One is gravity, and the other one's don't land on the board. You yes. just you fly in the air, don't land on the board. You'll break the board. Good rule. You might hurt yourself, but I'm more worried about you breaking my boards all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I think I broke my board. Okay, I gotta ask because I know everyone watching is wondering, is there any time of the year it's open to the public? No, and it never will be. <laughs> gotcha. I already knew that answer, but I had yeah. to ask. Um, it, it's real simple. I, I love to share it, but legal, it just can't be opened. Every insurance company that I've ever interviewed it just kind of laughed. Well, guys, uh, you're going to be sticking to the boring water park. So, so it, it's real simple. Either become really good friends with him or <laughs> become really good friends with me. And I like people that offer to help. By the way, if you need any help. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's two kinds of people. There's those who take and there's those who give. Yeah. And it's just like, be a giver. You know, I love do it. something for others. Yeah. And you'll find joy in that. All right. I think that's it. Cool. Thanks so much. All right. So I just want to say it's truly been an honor getting to know Cody and document his plays over the last month. He's a real stand-up guy with a big heart, and I'm looking forward to coming back and sending it with him again soon. All righty. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And wow, you actually thought I was going to let that big slide sit in the back of this video and not force myself to try it? Come on. I thought you'd know me better by now. With a gigantic 90 degree drop in, literally straight down, and these tiny side rails standing between you and possibly death, this slide is petrifying, especially if you're like me and have PTSD, post-traumatic slide disorder. Oh! It's so tall that its metal frame snapped in half while it was being set up. It is definitely challenges everyone that has been up to the top of it so far. Oh God. And, uh, it's challenging so, me from down here. You know, hindsight, I wish I would have just made it a little more gradual entry, but the way it is now, we're talking about a roll into a 90 degree slide, and if you do not go off it properly, you turn into a scorpion. Before you just start the major descent, which then launches you roughly around anywhere from 65 to 80 feet. But with a nervous smile, I climbed the 60 steps up to the top and prepared myself for this final boss of a slide. Well, let me tell you, this is a great view. So the slide kind of broke in the middle when you guys were putting it up. Yes, the slide <laughs> broke in the middle. But it's good to go now. Yeah, it's more better now than it was originally. I guess I'll watch you go first. You're the master. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Oh my god, dude, I'm so scared. Dude, I actually can't see 
the slide. Like even no matter how far over I get, I can't see it. It's gonna hurt so bad. For reference, that's a 23 foot platform over there. <laughs> like I'm not up playing it for the video. Like I genuinely think I'm going to get hurt. You're the wrong. worst part's the entry. I'm so. It's so steep. Ah! Okay, going on five minutes now. Sitting up there. I'm coming down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna do this, but I have to do this. All right, here goes nothing, I guess. And finally, Thick Boy had inched his way down past the point of return. Oh. Oh. I was right. My first attempt definitely hurt a little bit. Oh, well, we figured out why the slide hurt my stomach. There's little pieces of gravel on it. So that was great. So Cody lended me some of his gear and a board so I could give it another go. Other than the rough initial drop, this one actually felt good. That combined with my friends cheering me on made me want to try one more, this time feet first. Not my brightest idea. I kind of came fully off the slide, slammed even harder, got turned a bit sideways, and really didn't look like I was having a good time. But as I came off the ramp into a floaty backflip, the only thing I felt was the joy and excitement that made me love doing this stuff in the first place. I felt gratitude for the opportunity to even be here and inspiration to keep chasing similar experiences in the future. Yeah, actually, I was just hoping I wouldn't land on my face because I couldn't see a thing, but hey, it came from the heart while I was writing this script, so it counts, right? Also, I want my own water park. God damn it, it's so cool. Honesty, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the teepee slide. <laughs> What's funny is I might use that. Alrighty, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And about my trampoline gym I mentioned, we're gonna have it open regularly soon. So if you wanna stay up to date about that, go follow the Instagram at the flip pad. And hey, might as well follow mine while you're there. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.